Hi, I'm Shanti, the artist behind Shanti Finance. Fall is incomplete without a pumpkin, and Halloween, which is just coming up, is incomplete without a jack-o'-lantern. So I thought of clubbing the two ideas together and create an oil pastel tutorial and an oil pastel painting for fall and a giant surreal jack-o'-lantern. So let's see how the process goes on. But before we get started, I wanted you to show off my t-shirt, um, which I got from Oil Pastel Society. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, but they, it was a very nice gesture from them to share this t-shirt with me. I almost feel like a brand ambassador. So without much ado, let's get started with the painting. This painting, I'm starting with toning my watercolor paper and I'm using a cold press Strathmore uh, watercolor paper, uh, which I have taped to a drawing board and I'm toning it with uh, some watercolors with yellow in the center and blue on the sides. That's the whole idea. This is absolutely not a necessary step. It, it does not add much of value to it, but like many other painters, I have a habit that um, apart from watercolors for all other medium I like to work on a toned surface somehow it uh, uh, helps me a little bit by not having to fight with the white of the paper so I just toned it down with some watercolors like I said it is not at all a step that is necessary you can do it or you can skip it altogether now on to the painting um, the, this particular painting uh, it, it is free for you to practice and try like all of my painting but if you want to replicate it and show it on the media uh, social media that is or you want to gift it to your friend or you gifting is fine if you want to sell it to somebody then you might want to either change the design or you might want to give me the credit of the original design like i always mention in the video description below nothing personal on it it's just good practice in general so i'm starting with the background when i'm starting with the oil pastel the whole idea is that behind the painting or behind the pumpkin rather just around the pumpkin is the lighter area in the background and as we move away from the pumpkin it becomes darker i'm kind of trying to create a, a look of uh, light in the woods and going from colors from yellow to orange to magenta purple and then slowly pulling in greens and blues and fading out to darker colors onto the purple uh, pumpkin i'm starting i don't know why i keep on saying purple uh, onto the pumpkin i started by putting in the ridges with the dark brown color i think it is called uh, burnt sienna or something on my mongia set most more or less i have used only my mongia set on this particular painting so once that um, ridges were put in then I'm coming back with the orange color mostly in the other areas of the painting this is just the base first layer around the edges I'm using yellow ochre and um, a golden yellow colors uh, and then uh, when you see my hand with a rag on it what I do is I wrap the rag on uh, my finger and then try to push the colors into the paper more and try to blend it that way now i'm going on for the next layer on top of the previous layers and try to create like a um, different color edgy look i'm trying to add more and more pigments of color first onto the surface of the canvas and then i decided that in this for this particular project i'm going to use uh, odorless mineral spirits for blending my painting because I wanted to check out if I can create a watercolor wash look with oil painting absolutely you do not have to if you don't want to and a lot of oil uh, people who use oil pastels regularly do not even recommend to do so the reason being is watercolor um, or rather oil pastel is known for that more impressionistic or more rougher look so if you're using uh, odorless mineral spirits and blending it out and trying to look make it look like watercolors why not use watercolors instead yes i totally agree to your point on that but i just wanted to see if i could create that washy look and I, I i found out that it is very very easy to create that look if you're using odorless mineral spirits so 
on using odorless mineral spirits i have different videos where i show different ways of blending and i show how you how to do this uh, particular blending method with oil pastels so you can check out those videos i will link them in the video description below and the only thing that you need to remember is you need to let that layer of odorless mineral spirit dry completely before you come back with and add more oil pastel pigments now once that base layer of pumpkin is dry i'm coming back with a lot more of the dark browns and creating the ridges back again and this time you can see that i'm adding a lot more magentas and crimsons around my very dark browns and then going slowly from brown to crimson to red to orange and then finally yellow and uh, to uh, assimilate the painting or to make it look good what I'm trying to do is since the light source is from the back so the darkest area would be at the very bottom and at the middle of the pumpkin however there are the openings for lights for the jack-o-lantern so around that the area would lighten up a little bit that's the whole idea about the lights and darks in this painting if you can follow that so around the edges you will see the lighter yellowish colors while as around the bottom you will see very dark almost black colors and brown colors and in between you see the transition from dark to light uh, light colors and going from brown to or chromatic magenta to orange now onto the right side of the background i'm following the more or less the same pattern as i did on the left side it's just that the right side is much smaller area than the left side so the transitioning from yellow to blue is not as gradual and as long as on the left side so this had to be a little harsher and more sharper and going from one color straight away to the different color but um, i'm very happy with the look of the color transition in this painting so i have no complaints again i am using my little brush and odorless mineral spirits you can see that the brush tip is really really small so for larger areas you probably want to recommend a larger brush but the reason i stick to my small brush is that it does not wet the whole painting or it does not pick up a lot of odorless mineral spirits because that can make the paper a lot more wet which i do not want now onto the lantern in the little girl's hand i drew it out with a uh, brown colored pencil which is a polychromos color pencil from faber castle but if you do not have a color pencil doesn't matter it is not a mandatory step you can draw it out with a graphite pencil i just drew it out once again because i lost all of those lines when i added my layer of uh, watercolor and i just wanted to redefine them to make sure i understand where to put the colors now on to the ground area underneath the pumpkin you might uh, know that when you have a vessel that carries light like a lamp or something underneath the lamp is the darkest area because it is farthest away from the light so this is what i am making sure i achieve when i'm painting the ground so i'm putting the darkest of the greens and i'm coming back with a lot of blues and browns and even blacks in the very end in the next layer to get the dark color underneath the pumpkin as i'm moving away from the pumpkin and closer to the light source i'm using more of olive greens and yellows to create the lighter patches of areas around the lantern again i have to create a little bit of lighter green to show the light of the lantern and uh, that is the whole concept or the whole idea behind the darks and lights where i have put which color in this ground area once i put all the colors i'm coming back with my odorless mineral spirits and teeny tiny handy dandy brush and blending it all together and creating a smooth look i just fell in love with a little washy look see this is what happens when you have too much uh, odorless mineral spirit on your brush it drips down your painting this is not not something that you at all want that is why i stick to a smaller brush and use very little and dab it out on a piece of paper, a cloth before i actually use it on the surface of the paper so be a little uh, conscientious of that now on to the area uh, where I, I will onto the little girl and the area around the little girl so i'm first putting the darker colors and 
at first i'm just mapping it all out with just black oil pastel i do not use a lot of oil black oil pastel and i do not recommend using it a lot but you can use it a little bit and i'm technically using it just to lay out the mapping of the colors under the dress i'm using two or three different kinds of blues to create the gradual transitioning from dark and light the side of the dress facing the pumpkin uh, and facing the lantern will be lighter than the side away from the light source so that's the whole idea behind the dress i have not gone into put putting in too much detail on the little body because it's just a tiny tiny little body onto the hair i first drew it out with black like i said before and then i came back with purple blue very dark brown and created a little bit of highlights here and there with the flesh tint color onto the dress i am bringing all the colors together by using a white oil pastel for the lighter areas and then i'll come back with my odorless mineral spirit and brush and blend it all together onto the lantern the center of the lantern where there is the flame will be the lightest so i'm leaving that white with the white and around it i'm using orange and then red and then finally brown and in the process i'm losing all the fine details that i created so you will see me again coming back with my brown color pencil or black color pencil but once again i'm saying that it is not an important uh, not important to use the color pencil you can use just any graphite pencil that would totally work and if I was a little bit careful I probably wouldn't have would have saved the details and wouldn't even have to use it and to the blending phase on the dress like I said I'm not going for very big details or a lot of uh, you know folds and creases on the dress I just want to create a general impression of light and dark um, too much details on this such a little figure it's just an overkill and creating some dark shadows underneath her dress and on the folds of her dress that are away further in the creases of the body you know just the general feel of how light and dark and shadows work and creating that impact of the light of the lantern around the lantern and the bottom of the lantern so that it looks more realistic onto the trees around her the trees that are farther away from the pumpkin once again are the darkest so i'll start with black and then fill out the colors with a lot of blue but i will use a little bit of highlights with the flesh tint on the side of the trees that is facing the pumpkin but as i am drawing more and more trees towards the pumpkin or behind the pumpkin then you will see that i'm using more of the different shades of blue colors and then i will move towards the green colors to show the gradual transition of dark to light now I'm using a little bit of push pin here for as a scratching tool. You need to be a little bit careful uh, while using such a scratching tool um, so that you do not um, damage the paper. And I'm scratching or scraping up some of the colors of her hair to create some highlights. And then I'm putting in a little bit of white in those areas to create some sharp highlights around her head to show the impact of color or impact of light that is hitting on the edges of her hair from the jack-o-lantern you can say now on to the right hand side I'm using the same pattern of uh, colors for the trees the farther away from the pumpkin the darker the trees are the closer ones would be lighter so that's the general principle on the side as well the side that is facing the pumpkin will have some little highlights with grays and uh, flesh tones to bring the whole painting together and, and now i'm creating some random twigs here and there and creating a little bit of uh, grass impression of grass and twigs everywhere with greens and blues some leafy looking structures hanging from the branches that are hanging from the top i think that just brings the whole painting together that is more or less all about the painting in general i hope you enjoyed the painting and i hope you will enjoy the, your halloween and uh, um 
your Halloween paintings and you'll get an idea or two from mine. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section as usual and do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.